Hi, good morning, Denise Buchanan. You're the first person to join us. Uh, Beachman Mama, Patty Brown. Um, I wanted to start a few minutes early before our guest got here so I could connect with you uh, out there and uh, let you know how much I appreciate you let you know uh, that I hope you're having a good Monday. Say happy Monday to you. Um, I know for many people it's a tough Monday, but it's Monday and we're trying to make the best of it. I started Patrick just for a few seconds before you got here so there'd be enough people for you. Oh, well, thank yes. you. Yes, yeah, so, and before we welcomed our <sighs> guest, Mike Rowe, I hope people had a nice Easter, a nice Passover, a nice, uh, time with their families, even if they were joining their families virtually. I hope they had a lazy, daisy weekend. Why are you moving the camera over there? So uh, I have to go over no, here again. I'm just uh, moving this sign. I'll move it back on you okay. a little bit. No, we're back on you. Right now it's on your sisters over there. Anyway, we had a really nice weekend. Um, yes, to, we did. We went, ate a lot. Went to mass virtually. Um, which actually turned out to be really nice. Actually, St. Monica's did a mass. Uh, well, they do a mass online all the time. So I know many people went to mass online. Um, oh, Mike Rowe is already there. Holy macaroni, he's early. How do you know? Because I just saw it said Mike Rowe. Oh, you're getting better at your technology. Yes, I am. I actually did it without you early Sunday morning Ooh. for Sunday Paper Live while you were Ooh. sleeping. Maybe I'm not needed anymore. You are. You're always needed. And I like because Mike Rowe does things with his mother all I the time. I saw that. Yes. I believe she has a new book or, or she coming She has a out new today book. Today yes. Or tomorrow? Today or tomorrow. He'll tell us. But he's when I look through his Instagram, it's a lot of it is about his mother. Well, are you going to give an introduction? I thought reading... Mike Rowe's introduction and his biography was one of the funniest and I'm, I'm curious to see if he wrote it because it was so <laughs> self-deprecating and, and humorous at the same time of showing kind of his accolades and and what he uh, what he's done with his work so I, I gotta see did you, did you yes read I that? read that yeah. yes and from <laughs> he what enjoys I know his free time is talking about himself in third person <laughs> Or writing about himself in third person. It sounds like you're kind of guy. I know, it does. Yes, he sounds like you're kind of guy. And he's hosting this incredible show on Facebook Watch. It's called Returning the Favor, and it's so inspiring. It's all about uh, giving back to regular people who are out there day in, day out, trying to make the world a better place. And that's why people are commenting about your t-shirt. Oh, that's that a Kobe. Kobe. Actually, yeah. my mom got it. She went to that's right. this memorial and got it for me because I was out of town. That's correct, yes. It's a great shirt. It's a great shirt, yes. Uh, um, anyway, and uh, the show, uh, Returning the Favor, is so inspiring. It's on tonight, so you can watch it on Facebook Watch, but we should probably let yes, him we should. come on. Do, can you do that, please? Yes, I can do it. Oh, there, there we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Here you go. Welcoming yeah, Mike. The one, the only. The, coming in. He's coming in, Mike Rowe. And we don't know where oh, he wow. is. Wow, it's been four years today since Kobe's last game. I was oh. at that last game. You are wow. four years today. I hope they're replaying that team. I'm hey, enabled. Mike Rowe. Hey. <laughs> Get that. I'm so enabling. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Oh, just absolutely living the dream. <laughs> well, I said, I said to Patrick, look at Mike Rowe spending all of his time promoting his mother. You should learn from Mike Rowe. My mother has written a truly hysterical book and decided to get it on the shelves at the height of the plague. So, <laughs> as a good son, it is incumbent upon me to uh, sing her praises, tell her story, and hawk this thing with the white hot intensity of a thousand suns, like I used to do once upon a time in the middle of the night on the QVC cable shopping channel. That's yeah, my I, I read life. about that. That was, I was just saying how you're, uh biography or your kind of elevator pitch for Mike Rowe was one of the best uh, that, I've, that I've ever read. And I, I didn't know that's how you kind of started was, was in uh, the, the QV, uh, QVC space and being able to talk about a pencil for eight minutes uh, without stopping. Well, you know, that's, that's our industry in a nutshell. You know, the ability to spend long periods of time saying absolutely nothing at all. Um, <laughs> and uh, the less you have to say, the more uh, dramatic you 
make it sound. And if you can pull that off, then people hire you to impersonate a host, uh, which I did for 25 years or so. Yes, uh, but you're, you're more than impersonating a host. Let's talk about the show that I love that you do. It's called Returning the Favor. And I was just explaining before we came on with you, it's on Facebook Watch and it's on tonight. So people can go and watch uh, Returning the Favor. And it's so great because it's inspiring. And you've been doing these specials, Mike, in the time of COVID. Why did you want to do that right now? Because everybody else has stopped production. Well, because the chair I'm sitting in right now is about the only place I can, I can get my butt to. So mm -hmm. I sit here and we figured out a way to do our show remotely. And the craziest thing is the last three episodes we've done from here have reached over 12 million people. Wow. Um, and the 70 or so we've done over the last three years have reached well over 300 million. So this has turned into a thing, you know, I, I, I'm always late to the technology party, but you know, Michael Rourke, I think he was a, a page back in the day or something like that at NBC, right? He was a page at NBC and then he worked uh, for me for about eight years and uh, one of my dearest and best friends uh, on the planet and he is the producer of this show a great uh, man a uh, great humanitarian and I'm so proud of him for doing this show well you know what I am too and I'm you know I'm uh, I'm more suspicious of earnestness than you might think but I'm doing this show because <laughs> so many of my friends in the industry who are really decent people have wound up working on programs over the years, and I'm not going to mention any names, but various programs that they're not necessarily proud of, right? This is just the way of the world. So Michael, the producer of this thing, and everybody over at Hudson Media is so pleased to be doing a show that is genuinely warm and real. We just go around the country looking for people who are slightly better than us. And then we surprise them and we give them something that allows them to do more of what they were doing anyway. And we just started throwing these things up on Facebook three years ago. And um, the next thing we knew, it was, it was bigger than dirty jobs, right? It was just like, for me, I'm just getting tens of thousands of notes week after week after week after week the community the fans of the show they program the show so all the ideas come from people who watch it and we just go out in the world and try and you know spread a little sunshine well it's really it's you're returning the favor i love the title because all of the people that you profile are out there doing this whether you're helping them or not, right? They're out there trying to, as I say, move humanity forward. They're trying to make their community better, their communities better. And you come in and make their, you amplify their work. You amplify. And I liked it. Let's talk a minute about Kavanaugh Bell, the young boy that you talk about tonight. He's seven years old. He took his entire life savings, which was $600. <laughs> to make these care packages for senior centers. So tell a little bit about what you did for him, Mike. Well, that's the headline, right? This kid is in uh, Gaithersburg, Maryland, yeah. and right. he went to see his uh, grandma and really wasn't allowed to and learned that she needed things that she didn't have. So he put together a care package and got it to her. And then he looked around at the nursing home and realized it was full of other people who were, who were lonesome and, and, they, and they needed simple things. So this kid, he takes $600 and he starts by hand putting these packages together and his mom helps facilitate the delivery of them. Well, somebody in the local news got wind of it and did a quick little piece on it. And then I got wind of it. And because my mom lives not too far from there, I did a Zoom call with my mother. The production company arranged uh, a surprise for the kid. And basically what we did, we did two things. We... We, we made him whole. We gave him $600 back. Because when you're it's seven years saying. old, right, when, when you're seven and everything in your world is $600 and it's gone, I mean, that's, that's you know, <laughs> the kid's wiped out at seven. So, <laughs> so we, we gave him 600 bucks and then we gave his mom 10 grand earmarked for his education. Wow. So, you know, the, the fun thing about a moment like that, I mean, obviously, it's got all the feel-good stuff you want. 
But here we are stuck, isolated, sequestered, separated, quarantined, sheltering in place. Are we, we, how are we going to do this? My mom hops on in front of her computer, talks to this kid's mother. Everybody's crying. Money's flying back and forth. Nobody knows what's going on. And, and, and it's a hot mess, Maria. It's a hot mess of well-intended uh, altruism. Mm -hmm. And people dig it. It's wow. so inspiring. Yeah, and we can't wait to watch. Uh, it's out tonight, the next one, correct? Yeah, but honestly, in, in Facebook world, it's always on whenever you're there. It's, you know, I don't even know how to talk about premieres anymore. We, <laughs> we do one a week, right. but then people find it, like, for the first time, and then they'll go back and they'll watch all 70 uh, or 80 or however many they are. Yeah. Can you hear us? We're there? Yeah, you yep. can hear us, right? Oh yeah. Okay. So talk talk about your 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 passion of dirty uh, jobs. I mean, it's it's a show that seems so relevant today because you were highlighting jobs that so many people didn't want to do, and you've always been a big spokesperson for you know small businesses and and a lot of America's backbones. And and I've seen you recently highlighting uh, these these workers today and how finally during this time of Corona and COVID, people are finally recognizing our grocery workers to a different degree. Our uh, landscape gardeners or you know these types of people can you can you speak about that yeah sure I mean dirty jobs fundamentally was a celebration of unsung heroes or as we would say today essential workers right, right. but you know when times are flush and people are prosperous you you don't really think about those people so dirty jobs came on at a time when reality TV didn't really exist it was back in 2003 it was a very different uh, approach to television and production and it worked but then in 2008 when the economy crashed suddenly dirty jobs became relevant in ways nobody really anticipated because we're in a recession and and everything's tight so that made that show weirdly relevant it just happened again with returning the favor for the last three years we've been out returning favors and, you know, it was a nice show and people loved it. But all of a sudden now, the whole world, the right. whole country is, is hyper aware that there, that there is no such thing as a non-essential job, right? Yeah. I mean, so we talk about healthcare workers and we talk about delivery people and you can go down the list. But when you talk about the economy and we've got 17 million people now who have lost their jobs. So on the surface, those jobs would appear to be non-essential, right? That's why they lost them. But look what's happened to the economy as a result of their absence, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's kind of where we are right now. For me, it's full circle. Dirty jobs started with a celebration of essential jobs. Returning the favor is now a realization that all jobs are essential and everybody is out there doing the best they can in their own way. Somewhere in between those two shows, to answer your question, Patrick, I started a foundation called MicroWorks. Right. And, right. and the, the focus of MicroWorks is on the skills gap. So pre-corona, our country had 7.3 million open positions that required training, uh, not a four-year degree. So most of what I do in my spare time on the foundation side is try and make a persuasive case for millions of good jobs that exist that for whatever reason people don't aspire to, and then provide a scholarship for people who want to get the training necessary to do those jobs. So that's a, that's a long way of saying dirty jobs is here, returning the favors here, micro works is in the middle, De deadliest catch, the crab fishing show is over there. Right. Basically, I've been doing the same show for 20 years. I just changed the title. Every yeah. six or seven. So speaking further on your foundation, are you just inundated with people kind of wanting to now go down that route? <laughs> it's a great question. And uh, last I checked, right now in, in the month of April, we are taking applications for our next round of work ethic scholarships. Uh, we have over 10,000 so far. Wow. And we're giving away a million dollars. I do this every year right around right. this time. Right. Right. Um, Last year, around this time, I think we had 3,000. Okay, now so we have 10. Wow. So people, people are starting to get it. They're starting to realize that the best path for the most people 
might not be a four-year degree. Right. Might not be the most expensive path, you know. And I think that that, I think that's an important realization. And it's a big part of what my foundation tries to uh, debunk. Yeah, Mike, now where do people go if they want to apply for a scholarship, if they want to get help, if they want to add on to that 10,000 number right away, where do they apply? MikeRowWorks.org. My name, M-I-K-E-R-O-W-E, works.org. Just click on the link. Look, you got to jump through some hoops. These are work ethic scholarships. It's not complicated, right. but we ask you to do stuff that a lot of scholarship funds don't. You know, I, I'd like to see a video of you making a case for yourself. I'd like to see a short essay. I'd like references, you know, things that employers ask for. I think it's important because the money I raise and give away really comes from Instagram and Facebook. You know, I've got five and a half million people who, for whatever reason, are curious about what I'm doing. And they <laughs> have been hugely instrumental in, <laughs> in not allowing me to quit, right? I mean, yeah. every year we do it again. So we're in our... We're in our 12th year now, and um, I'm proud of it. You know, it's a, yeah. We're moving the needle, and, and, and now we have stories of people who actually prospered as a result of learning a trade. And, you know, that's, that's gratifying. So some of the questions uh, that I, I had asked people what they wanted to ask you, and some people uh, said, like, here, um, which trade jobs do you think coming out of this corona period will be most in demand well the the short answer is the same ones that were in demand prior only more so obviously healthcare is going to be reimagined it's going to be something we like i think we haven't seen before um i think i think education too sidebar is going to be reimagined what we're doing right now and all the zooming and all of the go to meetings right that that's going to allow people to learn in ways that i don't think we've seen either which is going to make the whole trade experience i think a lot more attainable to a lot more people but to answer your question welding plumbing mm -hmm. steam fitting pipe fitting uh mechanical right i mean mechanics today so many of them that have come through our foundation wind up making six figures because it's software engineering it's rocket science there are huge opportunities that people just don't get uh we've heard stories about the six-figure welders those stories are real they're all over the place we've trained a few um but i think i i, I think it's a kind of a trick question to point to a very specific trade because the way the trade world works is a little different than the way the white collar world works. If you master welding, for instance, it often happens that you wind up getting into carpentry or into plumbing or into heating, air conditioning, electric. And then the next thing you know, you have a, you have a small business and a couple of vans and half a dozen employees. Right. We see, we see this happen all the time. So my, my better answer to that excellent question is to say that it's really not about the job. It's about the path. And if you get on the path into the skilled trades, I believe in the next 10 years, if you're willing to work and travel, you got to go to the work is in many cases, you're willing to do that. You can write your own ticket. Wow. And, and speaking of the path, I have a younger brother who's a senior in, in college. He's graduating or he's supposed to graduate next month. And uh, he lives with a bunch of his friends, all who have, you know, great degrees from, or about to get degrees from Michigan, uh, University of Michigan, and all of their jobs just got taken away. They all thought they were about to go into the summer with jobs lined up. What, what kind of advice would you have for people that have gone down that path versus, you know, the route that you've been saying of, you don't really necessarily need the degree, but you can go and do these, uh, you know, six figure plumbing work and stuff. Yeah, well, not to pile on, but it's not just that their jobs went away, it's what didn't go away. And what didn't go away was their debt. Right. Yeah. So now you're, you're educated for a job that doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. You've got an $80,000 millstone around your neck. Mm -hmm. And you might wind up in mom's basement for a couple of years. Right. Now, that's, that's a cautionary tale. I don't, <laughs> I don't want people to have to endure that. Your question is, okay, those are the cards you have right now. How do you play them? Yeah. I would say... Or what advice? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, it, there's there's always a way out. But the way out in this instance depends entirely on your 
ability and your willingness to hit the reset button. There's still time, as Led Zeppelin said, to change the road you're on. We see it all the time now with people 30s, 40s, and 50s. They just do over. Uh, I want to do over. Well, look, if you're, if you're 22, 23 years old and you've got that kind of debt, uh, they can't take the knowledge away from you that you have. But as much as moving forward is going to depend on your ability to, to master a useful skill, you're also really, really going to have to manage your finances. And I'm not an expert in finance by any stretch. But this business of debt, guys, it, it's, it's very difficult to have this conversation yeah. without stepping back and saying, it's not that college is bad. My liberal arts degree served me well, you know, and I got mine in 1984. It was two years at a community college and then three years at a university. Liberal arts communications degree. When the dust settled, it cost $11,200. Today, same school, same courses, same exact everything. It's just over 90 grand. Crazy. People, I know I'm not answering your question, Patrick, but it's an important point. So I'm hijacking the exchange for a moment just to simply say that, that people need to be righteously horrified of the cost of a four-year degree. It doesn't mean a four-year degree is bad. It just mm -hmm. means if you're not certain, if you're not really sure about what you want to do, then take a breath, learn a skill first. There's always a chance to go back to school. And I just, more than anything else, I just hate to see kids sign on the dotted line when they're not sure who they want to be or what they want right. to do. I and agree. they find themselves in this exact situation. You have a great uh, video actually on your Instagram page that I watched about explaining the debt and going into community colleges. And then when you actually have a skill going on, it's actually really worth watching. It's very well done. And I think it's, it is really thought provoking. You talk a lot about the sweat pledge, uh, Mike. What is that so people understand? I know you talk a lot about work ethic, you talk about motivation, but what is the sweat pledge in your opinion? It's, it's, it's one of those hoops you have to jump through. It's one of the things you have to sign. I was looking eight years ago to uh, you know, figure out a way to crystallize what it is I believe makes a good employee and um i had some wine full disclosure you know i was home i was sitting around took a legal pad started writing down some ideas you know things qualities that that helped me when i was trying to make my way in in my chosen field and qualities that i value as as an employer today and 12 things came out it was just a statement of purpose sweat stood for skills and work ethic aren't taboo and so i put <laughs> i put this together it's kind of a combination of the boy scout law and and the 12 step recovery program <laughs> right that's so, right so if if you want to apply for a microworks work ethic scholarship one of the things you need to do is sign the sweat pledge because look it's not perfect i don't but i i don't know how to quantify patrick's work ethic you know, until I at least have a conversation with him and start to see, you know, what are your thoughts on gratitude? What are your thoughts on delayed gratification? What are your thoughts on, on, on safety and personal responsibility? And, you know, all of these things that really came out as lessons from dirty jobs years ago wow. now consist of a, or, or are part of a manifesto of sorts. And so it just became a thing. Sweat pledges now hang in guidance counselors' offices and everybody who applies for a scholarship and, and people buy them. They're only 12 bucks, but the money goes to the foundation. And we've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, you know, auctioning things off through my garage, selling sweat pledges. We're a very non-traditional foundation that's so far awarded about $5 million in scholarships. Wow. So wow. look, I mean, I'm not doing it the easy way, but we're doing it the real way, and we and we stay in touch with the people uh, who we help. And now we're in the business primarily of telling their stories because they're a lot more articulate than I am, you know. Because they're they're the real. They did it, yeah. you know. So like when when you, I mean, I wish I could tell you a better story, Patrick. To get back to your other question, but if I had a, somebody here who got a, a welding certificate 
and they were able to explain to you over the next three years how it was they wound up working on heavy equipment up in North Dakota making $180,000 a year with no debt, then you would have a better answer and a personal story and a, and a face to attach to it. And that's, that's, when, that's when things get persuasive. That's when the needle starts to move. And that's, you know, when you can change lives. That is so awesome. That's incredible. And one final question there, Mike. Somebody said, if you were 18 today, what trade would you choose? <laughs> if I were 18 today, I'd buy Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's a great question, but it's, a, it's kind of a tricky answer because part of what we um, espouse at Microworks is that all jobs are trade jobs. You know, there's the skilled trades and they represent some traditional blue collar stuff. And my answer to the question is welding because it's a great way in. But my better answer is to say that, you know, you and Patrick and me, you know, we can approach our work as tradespeople. And tradespeople, like dirty jobbers, tend to look at work as a thing with a beginning and a middle and an end, right? They, people used to ask me all the time, what do, what do dirty jobbers know that, that, the, that the rest of us don't? Well, why is everybody having so much fun on that show? And part of the reason is because they know when they're done. You know, you guys probably have a desk at work. Your desk at work probably looks a lot like it does at five in the afternoon as it does at nine in the morning. Oh. Tradespeople, they, you know, they know how they're doing. They can see the pipe going in the ditch. They can see the wall going up. They can see the wire being run. You know, constant feedback. You always know how you're doing. And if you think of your work that way, whether you're a, a fake host like me or actual host like you or a terrific writer like my mom. There you go. It, 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 it doesn't matter. If you look at your work like a trade, then for me, uh, you immediately become somebody different. You, you leave the place of being an employee, mm. somebody who is, in many cases, too dependent, and you become more of a, a freelancer. You become, you become more skilled. And truly, when you have a skill, when you've mastered your skill, whatever, whatever field you're in, that's when you have autonomy. And if you have autonomy and skill with no college debt, that's when you have freedom. Right. And when you have freedom, you can quit. And there's nothing more fun to do than quit one job and start another one. People are scared of quitting. They shouldn't be. I got fired from every job I ever had, Patrick. 330 jobs. Never got back. Asked I, back thought that. I saw you got fired from the graveyard shift. <laughs> you bet. And deservedly so, I might add. Mike, several people here are saying, you know, great at 18, but what do you do if you're 40 or 50 and you've just lost your job? How yeah. can, you, can you start over at 40 or 50? Can you go in and become a welder? And several people have said to me, make sure you mention it's not trades men, it's trades people, because there are women obviously sure. becoming welders and others. But right. can you start this uh, line of work at 50? Yes, but I'm not going to paint a, a rosier picture than it is. It's hard, right? I mean, it's, it's always hard to restart. You can always do it. But is it harder at 50 than 20? Yeah, I think it is. But look, the more empowering point is, is the one you just made. It is tradespeople. Women today, uh, in my view, have no idea the extent of the opportunities that are waiting for them in the construction field. In fact, the most recent uh, video we did on Microworks uh, highlights a woman named Victoria Knight. Victoria Knight applied for a microworks scholarship a couple years ago, uh, met another woman in her class, and she basically wanted to redo houses, right? She was full on construction. These two met, started a company. So it's, it's, it's skills meets entrepreneurs. Now these two women are, are rehabbing houses. And we spent the day with them not long ago over in, uh, where were we? Fort Wayne, I think. Was it Fort Wayne? Doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> we were. <laughs> was, no, no, South Bend. South, South Bend, South. Indiana. That's where it was, Notre Dame. But I mean, I'm, not to free associate, but, but when you see a, a, a 25 year old woman who hit the reset button and just decided she was going to go into construction and now she has her own company, it's called Hard Hats and Heels. 
I mean, that's right. just, that's a good it's name. incredible. I mean, that's it's great. incredible. So that's sure, th the short answer is yeah. But you know, it's a, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sugarcoat it. It's scary and it's tough yeah. hitting yeah. the reset button, no matter what field you're in. But possible hard hats and heels. Well, I want to thank you so much for shouting out your mom. You can get her book on Amazon or at independent tomorrow. bookstores tomorrow. It's hitting the shelves tomorrow, but you can get it right now. Aboutyourfatherbook.com. It's there. That's my mom. She's 82, already New York Times bestselling author. That's my dad. He's 87 and the most interesting cat walking around on the planet. And that's me horrified because my mother has been writing me letters about my dad for 30 years. And now they're in a book. And I saw she said she, she's been married for 60 something years. Wow. They've been married, right? It's, uh, honestly, it's their their relationship is unlike any uh, I've ever seen. Uh, they're still in love. I think they still mess around and they write stories about <laughs> each other. It's super weird. Well, I think it's Thank so you. great. We love Thank mother so son things. Yes. yes. And uh, if you want to apply for those scholarships or you can follow Mike Rowe Works on Instagram and then apply for that and look up the sweat pledge. And then most also important tonight, you can watch Returning the Favor or you can check it out on Facebook Watch anytime. It's feel good TV, feel good internet, feel good programming, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I want to thank you so much, Mike, for joining us today. And Did I do this right? I've never done this on Instagram before. No, you were looking great. in the right place. Did it work? You were the earliest, the earliest uh, we've ever seen. You were on time by ahead of ahead of show by two minutes. Well, yes. look, I have nothing. I, what, I I can't blame it on the commute. Like if <laughs> if I can't get down to the office on time in my own house. You'd be surprised yeah. how many yeah, people be. have been struggling with this. Really, people who have trades, they're struggling. But we want to thank you so much. <laughs> Mike You're welcome. Rowe, returning the favor. Mike Rowe works. You name it, sweating, pledging, work ethic. He's got it all covered. <laughs> thank, thank you again. You. Thank you so Thanks, much. guys. Thank you, Take Mike. care. Thank you. Well, bet. Bye bye. Oh, whoops. You, you there you go. The there, that's thing. very good. Well, he was incredible. He so, was really good. Yeah. Wow. Really, That's really good. good information for all different ages, different areas of life, different expertise, different um, kind of everything. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. You enjoyed him. Yeah, yeah. I thought he's really smart. I mean, he I, I really knew he's really smart, but yeah, I thought he gave some really good. Although he didn't feel like he pinpointed some sort of form of advice for people that are in their you know graduating. I think just the idea that it's you know it's never too late to hit the reset button, and you can always you know change roads that you're on is uh, is great enough advice. I believe that. You know, a lot of kids that, that do get those four-year degrees um, don't feel like they could go and do that kind of craftsmanship or trades work or anything like that because it doesn't yield to what, they're, what they feel like the education they got. But hearing him say that there's, you know, uh, welders or craftsmen and stuff like that that are making six figures yeah. um, is kind of a great, you know, way to show that it's possible. And a lot of women... Uh, are going into these professions and doing really well in construction and welding and trucking and all of those sort of things. But what I think he said is that he's trying to elevate uh, the profile of these jobs. And that's what his foundation is doing, doing right. so well. And so many people here are saying, you know, oh, can we rewatch? Yeah, you can rewatch it on stories. And, and YouTube after. And YouTube after. And, but I think he had great advice also about work ethic. You know, yeah. everybody's going to have to grind it out. No matter your age, we're all going to ha have to shift, reboot, get on the new path. And I think he's uh, really such a testament to hard work, to not thinking any job is beneath you, starting uh, at the bottom and shifting and uh, trying something new. So all these kids who are graduating, uh, Marcus Lemonis said, you know, go live in your parents' basement and start mm -hmm. working for an internship or work for free. He's also saying, go get a skill. Yeah. Get yeah. a skill. Well, I think the interning is you are, are getting a skill in a way. I mean, I think that's what Marcus was saying is when you're working under yeah. someone and you're working for them yeah, that for is free, you're, skill. you're yeah. yeah, I mean, you're learning from them and you're, you're getting the skills from that yeah. person you're, you're learning from. And it's so interesting that kind of his, um, you know, charitable is, you know, charity organization and stuff is so different than college. It's so similar. Oh, yet Michael so different. Mark said we did a good job. Oh, okay, Michael that's Mark great. is the producer I know, of Turning the Favor. Oh, yeah. Returning the favor on Facebook Watch. Facebook Watch. Yes, we want Facebook Watch to do our show. Yeah, pick us up, Facebook Watch. Come on, Facebook Watch.
Okay. Anyway, we want to thank you. I uh, want to thank Mike Rowe. Yes. Yes. He was really, he is inspiring. And I really admire the work he's doing, all the scholarships he's uh, mm -hmm. handed out and all the lives he's changed uh, through his foundation and all the lives they're changing on returning the favor. Yes. I love that. Since so, we didn't introduce ourselves, we'll give oh. a closing goodbye. <laughs> I'm well, Patrick Schwarzenegger. And I'm his mother, Maria Shriver. So maybe when you're like Mike Rowe, you'll be promoting me when I'm 80. Of course. Don't forget about me yes, when I'm 80. I never will. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be here all week long bringing you people we hope that are inspiring, motivating, helping, and that have ideas to help you uh, at any stage in life because we all need help at every stage of life. So have a good Amen. Monday. Have a great Monday. And we'll see great you. Great start to the week. Yes. And we'll see you tomorrow and every other day after that. Okay. Bye.